Welcome to the third session of the webinar series on Agritech Startups brought to you by the 2030 Water Resource Group. Good evening to all of you. For those of our participants who are joining us for the first time, the 2030 Water Resources Group, hosted by the World Bank, um, helps countries achieve water security by facilitating collective action between the public sector, private sector, and civil society. In Maharashtra, the 2030 Water Resources Group is the secretariat to the Maharashtra Water Multi-Stakeholder Platform. As a part of our outreach efforts to support the government of Maharashtra and our private sector and civil, uh, civil society partners during COVID, uh, we are organizing a series of webinars that feature agri-tech startups that play a role in addressing the food security challenge in the state. Uh, these organizations play different roles in the, in the, in the agri-value chain, including access to inputs, farm mechanization and tools, uh, quality control, monitoring, storage, processing, warehousing, uh, access to markets, financing solutions, and logistics. Today's uh, webinar, uh, brought to you by 2030 WRG in collaboration with Omnivore, features two organizations who play a role in the storage and the access to markets value chain. Uh, we have close to uh, 50 participants uh, online, and I see a lot more joining in uh, from various uh, sectors uh, today. Uh, we have members of various government departments, uh, uh, including Water Resource, Agriculture Department. We have members of various uh, World Bank and Government of Maharashtra projects, include, uh, including uh, the project on climate resilient agriculture, Pokhra, and uh, the SMART project. Uh, we have members from various private sector organizations, corporates, financing institutions, and startups. Uh, we also have members from various industry bodies joining us. Uh, we have civil society uh, entities, uh, academia, research organizations, non-for-profits, FPOs, FPCs joining us today. Uh, we also have colleagues from the World Bank Group and 2030 Water Resource Group across the globe joining us. Uh, we look forward to a very informative and uh, interesting session today. Uh, to briefly introduce myself, I am Meghna Rao Pelajani, and I lead the partnerships for the Maharashtra program. Uh, before we start the present uh, presentations today, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Kavita Sachwani, who's a Maharashtra program coordinator, to please come in. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Meghna, and uh, a good evening and good morning and a, a warm hello to all our partners from the government of Maharashtra. Uh, senior officials from other state governments, the private sector, civil society partners, um, our associates from the banking and financial services community, friends and colleagues from 2030 WRG, the World Bank, and everyone else on the call. Uh, and thank you for joining us again uh, for our third session, for those of you who attended our previous two, and thank you for your continued participation. Uh, we hope that uh, you and your family is well and safe and uh, navigating these challenging times. Uh, adjusting to the new normal in our lives. Uh, I think we've all moved to the virtual mode of communication and while it has its challenges, uh, we do feel grateful that it is what is keeping us together and allowing us to communicate and continue our work uh, and purpose. Uh, we all know that unprecedented challenges of lack of labor and uh, collapse in logistics due to COVID-19 induced lockdowns uh, has resulted in enormous supply chain breakdowns, uh, raising concerns around food security. Uh, we understand from many sources that the loss to the sector so far in many states in India, including Maharashtra, has been colossal, is growing, and that challenges are likely to be long drawn. Uh, reverse migration is expected to create further hardship for smallholder farmers with remittances drying up and livelihood of more and more farmers depending on the same farmland. Uh, the much-awaited stimulus package of uh, 1.6 lakh crores uh, or so uh, uh, for agriculture, which was announced by the government of India as part of uh, the Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, through eight measures is very well thought out uh, and puts a spotlight on much needed medium to long term critical infrastructure gaps. Uh, the reforms through the amendment of the Essential Commodities Act and the development of unified state level markets by abolishing the APMC Act are expected to increase the bargaining power of, the, of, of our farmers and will create impact in the medium to long term. However, the crisis situation being faced by farmers due to unsold or wasted produce still needs to be addressed. Uh, and this can come only through increasing in liquidity in the sector through direct cash transfers and compensation for crop losses and bringing in innovations which can create resilience in the long term. Uh, if adequate action is not taken, uh, the agri-water economic productivity in the rural sector would be a threat to the state uh, or national GDP, uh, water balance and and, and associated climate resilience, putting livelihoods of millions of farmers at stake. 
this necessitates the government, uh, the private sector and civil society to come together to work on different legs of the value chain more than ever before uh, to ensure food security. And an integral part of the agri value chain, I think, as we all have been seeing, um, uh, you know, in the last couple of months, uh, you know, and, and the multi stakeholder group are agri tech and, and, and water tech startups. Um, a, vib a vibrant agri tech and fintech ecosystem already exists in India with several startups already offering innovative solutions at various legs of the value chain. Uh, India, as we know, is home to close to 500 agri tech startups, uh, according to a Nas NASCOM report, growing at a rate of 25% uh, annually and, and, and have received more than uh, 250 million uh, you know, in funding. Um, these startups offer innovative solutions both at the input level and at the post harvest level. Uh, our, our endeavor at 2030 WRG, uh, as Meghna mentioned in the beginning, is to bring to the fore some of the work that these amazing startups are doing in India, uh, quite a few of them in Maharashtra, and that hopefully some of their solutions can address the challenges that our farmers, the FPOs, the private sector and state governments are grappling with. Uh, the reason we thought of doing this uh, uh, series is that we believe that there is perhaps an information asymmetry between the many startups that are coming up uh, and the solutions that they are offering, and perhaps also a lack of clarity on which leg of the value chain uh, of the agri value chain they fit in and potential users of uh, their services and products. Uh, from the perspective of the startups, some struggle and not all of them are startups. I mean, these are organizations and social entrepreneurs, but some of them struggle with getting through to the right partners to scale their solutions, which often inhibits growth. So we thought that we could leverage our uh, you know, our USP to convene multi-stakeholder meetings, bringing in some of these relevant startups into helping our, uh, into helping our MSP partners address some of the challenges which were discussed during our convening with the, with the Maharashtra government in the end of April. Uh, we do hope you find this a useful and relevant initiative. Uh, we thank you for joining us and encourage your participation. So once again, welcome to our, our, our third session, which we are co-convening this time with Omnivore, uh, which is an agri-sector uh, venture capital doing some interesting and meaningful work with agri-sector startups. Uh, we have with us Dinesh Shah, managing partner of Omnivore, who introduced us to these uh, to these uh, amazing startups. Dinesh co-founded Omnivore in 2010 and was previously with Nexus Venture Venture Partners and has worked in the cor in corporate finance roles uh, and is a member of the IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industries Agriculture and Food Processing Committee. Uh, welcome, Janesh, and also welcome the two founders, uh, the founders of these two startup amazing organizations. I don't think we need to call them startups. They're quite mature, but doing some amazing work. Uh, Devendra and Shashank from Ecozen and Dihat, uh, who we are featuring on our third session today. Uh, Janesh, may I request you to come in and say a few words about Omnivore and the startups you are incubating and your thoughts about uh, this initiative? Uh, thank you, and over to you, uh, Janesh. Thanks, Navita, uh, and thanks, uh, World and the 230, 2030 uh, WRG. Uh, I, I, am, I represent a fund called Omnigo, which is a food and agri sector focused fund. We invest into young startups trying to solve the problems of smallholder farmers uh, across India. Uh, we've been doing this for the last uh, couple of years, and today we are deploying our fund from the second fund, uh, what we have raised. Uh, while we make investments uh, in startups to uh, uh, to solve the agri problems, we, we always believe that whatever omnivore invest should be always be focused on solving the farmer problems. And we have a theory of change saying that whatever we do uh, should help farmers make profits, more profits than what they would have done otherwise, or make agriculture more sustainable, or make, or make agriculture be more climate resilient. Uh, we've been investing across various startups, and today uh, we got two exciting startups who are going to present uh, to the audience uh, today. Uh, first, we're going to have Devendra Gupta from Ecozen Technologies, uh, an awesome uh, tech solution which is trying to solve the, the cold storage problems for the uh, fruits and vegetable uh, segment across the, uh, uh, across the value chain. And we got Sashank following after, uh, after Devendra, who runs Dehat, uh, a very interesting startup who is doing end-to-end -end, uh, uh, solutions for helping farmers in the northern part of the country uh, to not only improve the income life, uh, 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 the overall income, what they're generating, but also provide the right advisory and provide inputs at the, uh, in, a, in a most optimal manner. Uh, 
without further ado i would let do the let the let the viewers start uh, talking about ecosystem and and uh, take it forward devendra over to you thanks anish uh, thanks a lot for the great introduction uh, very good evening all of you uh, i think thanks a lot to the uh, world bank the 2030 water resources group and all the eminent audience for making out time to uh, hear us out um megna uh, could i yes. get the option to share my screen absolutely uh, but uh, before you start your presentation devendra i would like to quickly welcome you and introduce you uh, so devendra gupta is the co-founder and ceo of ecozen solutions uh, he is an alumnus of iit kharagpur and he has an in-depth understanding of clean tech and agri value chain he aspires to disrupt the way perishables are handled today he is a world economic forum global shaper He is also a member of the Confederation of Indian Industries Task Force for Cold Chain uh, and a part of the Renewable Energy Committee of the National Center for Cold Chain Development. Under his leadership, the company has been recognized with numerous awards, such as the CII Award for Innovation in Cold Chain, uh, the Rabo Food Loss Challenge, and uh, amongst others. He was also chosen amongst uh, the 50 most influential sustainable leaders in 2017. Uh, thank you so much, Devendra, for joining us, and I'm uh, handing over control to you for the uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for the uh, kind words, uh, Megna. Hi, is my screen uh, visible? Yes, please. Could you just make it full screen? Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Great. Uh, so, guys, EcoZen is working to enable the farm to fork value chain for perishables. Uh, when I say perishables, I mean uh, a specific category of perishables. We are focused around the more perishable commodities. Say, uh, for example, cherry. Uh, it could be grapes. Uh, it could be a bit of pomegranate as well, but not say potato or say onion uh, for that matter. Uh, the whole thought process about uh, ecozen is that there is this segment of commodities uh, which are lying in the range of 1 million metric tons or less today and that is because that those commodities do not really have the wherewithal to access a lot of farther markets and uh, that is where we feel that uh, there is a gap in the overall value chain and uh, there needs to be a solution for these commodities to really uh, spring and you know to really grow into a much higher volume say reaching to a 5 million metric ton similar to say mangoes or similar to some of the few other commodities okay and uh, that is how you know uh, we are working towards ecozen uh, at ecozen we broadly have three verticals today the first one is around the production side of the uh, agri value chain wherein we are providing farmers with access to irrigation and the second one is around we are helping them access cold chain starting from the farm okay and uh, the third one is wherein we are also helping them uh, do the proper post harvest management and supply the right quality uh, matrix based produce to the buyers so all in all we are working to help us produce to manage and to market so far we have been able to provide our solutions to 30000 farms across the country so yeah i think we start with the farm uh then the cold chain and then the market linkage so uh, the way we went about this is that uh, way back in 2011 12 we learned that only 34.3% of the arable land is irrigated and to address that we built a solution which could help do irrigation with solar power with grid power and so on and with the ecotron solution that we started providing to the farming community uh this is one of the farmers whom we met and we saw that was facing a problem that he had arable land he had water in the bore but he did not have was not able to do irrigation so then we went about installing the system on his farm what was really astounding for us is when we visited the farmer after 18 months the same spot was transformed into this if you can see the bricks over here the bricks are the one same and this plastic tank became a proper cemented uh, irrigation infrastructure and the farmer himself was pretty happy and fitter as well as you can see from the picture what we also learned from him that while his uh, production really went up due to access to irrigation his income did not proportionately go up okay so just to summarize what we've been able to do in the ecotron uh, piece is that we've been able to help the farmers 
to uh, estimate the water levels, also manage uh, and prevent the windings from burning of the motor. Okay. Uh, also unjam the pump setting remotely. So we need to build some amount of analytics and now we also provide irrigation, uh, more, more efficient motors for irrigation along with the pumps. So we provide this combined offering to the farmers today. Okay, now, as I mentioned that uh, those farmers whom we had worked with, their income grew up, but uh, their production grew up, but the income did not increase proportionally. And we saw that there's a lot of situations wherein there is a high bulk of production, but there is not enough evacuation to the market. And that is what God is thinking that, you know, there needs to be a proper value chain for some of these commodities so that a proper supply chain for some of these commodities so that these commodities don't perish in case of such supply chain imbalance situations. And uh, when we delve deeper, we realize that the problem is pretty big, wherein uh, India on a whole loses around 7.3 billion US dollars worth of produce every year in this manner. This may be of the size of four times of what a whole of United Kingdom consumes in a year. So we built the EcoFrost solution, as you can see. Uh, this solution uh, is a 20 feet container and it can maintain temperatures in the range of 4 to 10 degrees Celsius. You can keep it anywhere and it will maintain these temperatures. It does not use batteries for backup. It has got a thermal energy storage technology, which can ensure that the temperatures are maintained for 30 degrees Celsius without any power. So what we are doing is the farmer can keep around five tons of produce safe in this unit and they can expect that the life would be longer than what would have been in the ambient situation. So they can reach out to farther markets by uh, pre-cooling the produce, staging them and packaging them and dispatching them. Our research shows that just by pre-cooling, you can get say a, a day or two of additional life uh, as compared to just the ambient uh, shipment. And uh, that allows them to reach to slightly farther markets. And if you're able to use a cold chain, you can extend the life to as much as 10x times the ambient depending upon the commodity. There are a few technology innovations for which we have filed patents around this particular product. And uh, this product also comes with an app wherein the farmer can choose the commodity that uh, he's trying to keep inside the unit, mention what is the quantity of it and what price he wants to sell it at. Okay, and this information comes to our platform as well. Currently, we have in the second uh, version of the product wherein we have launched a new link uh, where Say uh, previously there was a 20 feet container. Now you can uh, just get the link and build any kind of a room and run it with grid or run it with solar or whatever. So the whole EcoFrost experience has been put into the link. And this is now the link to your uh, fresh supply chain for the uh, farmers. And uh, the EcoFrost unit also comes up with the IoT stack, which enables a smart temperature and humidity control. Uh, it can identify refrigerant leak even before it happens. So there are multiple such diagnostic features which are also present in the product to ensure the highest of possible uptime. So all the products are almost uh, every time in an ICU and we get the data on a minute on minute basis as to how they are doing on the field. So uh, we also provide this product uh, as a direct upfront purchase. We also kind of lease this product out to the farmers. And there's also a community model. The picture you see over here is from the Kanpur Flower Mandi. Uh, and uh, this is being done, you bought out by the campus for Monday and they have been leasing it out to all the farmers on a pay per use basis. This is another model that uh, we have developed over the course of time, wherein the same unit, which is a portable unit, was used by, say, four different farmers in a year. So it was used by a rose farmer from December to February. He wanted to uh, make the most of the Valentines in the marriage season, by a grape farmer from March to May, by a dragon fruit farmer from July to August and a marigold farmer from September to November. So we saw that we are able to improve the asset utilization of the same unit by being able to provide pre-cooling on farm to multiple farmers. And the model that we have brought in right now is this particular product can be accessible for farmers for a 25,000 rupees monthly rental. And what we are doing is also that, let's say uh, the capacity of the unit is 5,000 kilograms and a farmer expects to do around three rotations in a month. So the total throughput is around 15,000 kilograms. We give an assurance to the farmer that at least for 2,500 kgs, we will give you a higher than the market price through the EcoConnect. And how do we really do that? Uh, this is EcoConnect or EC. We say that EC per becho or EC per kharido. EC per becho is for the farmers and EC per kharido is for uh, the buyers who could be say like the premium wholesalers or could be the B2B players like Reliance, Big Basket, et cetera. So through the app that we have, we get the information of where the commodity is present uh, on the field and where the farmer is. 
and we are providing this information to the buyers and helping them with traceability and tracking of the commodity, helping them to source farther market. Our focus is largely around farther markets. We want to help uh, grapes from Nasik to reach, say, Kolkata. We want to help them to reach Bangalore comfortably. We want to help cherries from Himachal to reach Pune or Mumbai. We want lychees to reach Bangalore, for example. So our focus is a lot more around making these very perishable commodities travel far off distances and reach out to the consumption markets, which they were not able to access before. And we are working to provide fresher produce with a lesser distribution loss. And we also work with farmers to help them as to what kind of a grade they should supply. This is a kind of an app which we provide to the farmer to give them a guidance as to what is the kind of uh, lychee they should not be sending and what is the kind of lychee they are sending to us. We also have uh, worked partnered with another company wherein we are doing image processing of pomegranate to tell us that where in the lot, what all kind of issues are there so that these act as a guidance point for farmers to give them an idea as to what kind of a rejections I could expect from a lot that I'm sending. So we give a complete traceability to the uh, buyer as well as to when the order was dispatched, uh, when was it confirmed, uh, what is the type of the order, was it pre-cooled, what is the output quality with the pictures and so on. So what we are essentially helping is that we are giving the farmers who did not have access to cold chain and uh, a lot of confidence in terms of they can reach to a farther market. Most of them are afraid that you know when we reach to the farther market, the price will crash. They are afraid that they would not get paid. They are afraid that there would not be transparency. They are afraid that the produce would perish on the way. So they tend to send in markets which are close to 300 kilometers. Now with access to cold chain and with the market linkage, just with the pre-cooling, they can access to markets which are say one or two nights away, further away. So going to markets which are say 900 kilometers, that expands their reach dramatically. And we also work with some of them where we have volumes to use a reefer van to ship out the produce to much larger distances. Okay, and this reefer option really helps optimize the volume and also helps uh, reduce the cost of air freights in certain cases. So just to give you a small example, we had worked with a farmer who was uh, in Ahmednagar and he was doing farming of chrysanthemum. So this farmer took our product on lease by paying around 75,000 rupees and some transportation of the unit. Okay, he was able to sell his uh, produce of around 700 kgs, uh, which was earlier for 25 rupees for 120 rupees. The balance 700 from 25 rupees to 200 rupees. And uh, he was able to earn overall of income of 5 lakh rupees additional in a period of three months. We connected him to buyers in Hyderabad, in Ahmedabad and in Jaipur, wherein just in a normal truck without uh, having a refrigerated truck or anything, just with pre-cooling and market linkage, he was able to earn this additional income in a period of three months. So what we are trying to do is to help them uh, produce, to help them uh, manage their produce right after the harvest in a proper manner, reduce the losses, reach out to the farther markets and get the right uh, value for their commodity, thereby leading to an increase in 50% income. During the COVID time, we saw that uh, really, uh, producing, really doing production, et cetera, would be very easy for us in the organization. And a lot of farmers started contacting us that, you know, their produce is perishing and they are not able to sell the produce to the market. Can we help deploy a cooling solution on their field? So this is like an installation or uh, multiple such installations were done by our team on the fields for farmers, wherein they were able to keep their commodity safe. And then we also started helping a lot of them to take their commodities to farther markets. And uh, so we uh, help, like say some farmers, for example, with FIG to reduce their losses by using cold chain. Uh, we help farmers to optimize their logistics by sending out much larger loads of uh, pomegranate by having cold room at a destination site so that we can, even if the demand is less for a day, we can distribute it over the next few days. So that is how we were able to optimize the logistics and reduce the losses and help improve some of their income. So, for example, this is the case in case of cherry uh, while you're working from Himachal. Uh, we saw that there's a problem of worms in cherry. And uh, if you are able to do the cold treatment properly, the fruit fly eggs actually uh, go to sleep or they get destroyed. And uh, for the harvesting that we were doing with cherry, we started doing pre-cooling. And uh, then we also tested out with multiple treatments, ambient, then pre-cooling plus ambient transportation, then pre-cooling plus cold chain transportation. And uh, the produce was shipped out from Shimla. 
uh, was pre-cooled over there itself, then reached to Delhi and pushed out either in train or in flight to uh, Mumbai. And what we saw was that wherever we had a cold chain uh, use, the acceptance rate was around 87 percentage. And wherever we did not have any cold chain use, it was around 50 percentage. So able to dramatically improve the uh, quality or the freshness of the cherry as well at the destination point. The remaining 13 percentage that was rejected was because of multiple reasons. It could be that, you know, the uh, grade was not okay or the size was not okay or the ripening stage was not okay. So this is the, uh, example. yeah. Devendra, in the interest of time and so that we are, make sure we are able to take questions as well, I uh, request you to wrap up the presentation whenever. Okay, sure. So, yeah, I think uh, this is the broad uh, three pictures of uh, Cherry at the three stores. I think you can see the marked difference. And I will kind of just skip this. So in Maharashtra so far, we are working in multiple regions. Our larger focus belt is around Sangli, Satara, Solapur, Mahabaleshwar area. And then again, the Nasik, Pune, uh, Nagar area. Okay, wherein we are doing a lot more of activities in terms of storage and the commodity procurement as well. So far during the COVID-19, we have worked on these eight commodities very actively. Uh, out of which Maharashtra, from Maharashtra, we have grapes, strawberries, pomegranate and figs and also mangoes. So this is our facility in Pune, uh, wherein we make products and all the technology. And uh, 2020 vision is to ensure that able to reach to 100,000 farms uh, and create access of perishables produced for 25 million people. So yeah, I'm done. Uh, great, thank you so much, Devendra. Very interesting presentation and great to see how you've merged uh, the problems in the agri value chain and sustainable solutions uh, together to, to reach uh, the impact that you have. Um, so, uh, Devendra, you would like me to share the video, right? Uh, if it's time, or if it is not there, we'll skip it. So, that is on you. Uh, okay, we, I, I'll just share the video really quickly. Farmer, we worked uh, in Mahabaleshwar with strawberries. Uh, he used our uh, technology on the farm and he also uh, was able to take his produce and sell it off to far off markets. Just a second. Uh, are you able to see the video? I think it may now. Uh, sorry, uh, are you all able to see the video? Hello? No, make now. No, no. Uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry. I think there's some uh, technical error. Uh, sorry, Devinder, I think we'll move to the questions now. And if we have time at the end, we'll come back to the video. Um, so we have a question from uh, Deepa Magu. Uh, what is the cost of, what is an approximate cost of the EcoFrost solution? Yeah, yeah, I'm just in the chat. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can address the question. Uh, you can answer the question uh, so everyone can listen to uh, the answer. Yeah, yeah, I'm just responding. Okay. You got it. So, question. Anyways, uh, but uh, so in terms of the cost of the product, we have uh, different models in terms of how you can go about accessing the solution 
So uh, one particular solution is wherein we provide the unit on a lease. So, Devendra, we can't hear you too well. Sorry, can you repeat that? Hello, is it better? Yes, Hello. Better, thank you. Is it better now? Yeah. So the solution better. can be. Yeah, the solution can be accessed by farmers in two particular ways. Okay, one particular way is wherein you know uh, we are providing them it on lease, and they can get it for twenty five thousand rupees on a monthly basis, and uh, they can go about uh, using the product for a quarter uh, while their harvest is getting completed, and then they can give it back to us, and we can give it to anybody else. So uh, the one particular model is for twenty five thousand rupees. The other way is when they can access it, it to, uh, you know, probably depends on what route they are taking and the size of the product they are going for. Okay, so broadly they can access the technology they want to get complete capex. And get it. Then there is a lease to own model as well, wherein they have to say spend like three lakh rupees of uh, initial down payment, and they have to go about spending like twenty twenty five thousand rupees on a monthly rental. Okay, then over the course of uh, say a period of three to four years, the unit becomes theirs. So these are the two models on which we are providing the unit to the farmers. Thank you, Devendra. Um, there's a question from uh, Isha Chauhan. How do you gather buyers on your platform? So, uh, is more we are working more with the B2B segment currently. Okay? So, uh, B2B segment is more like a telecalling approach where we call them up, we share what we are doing with them, and we are able to onboard them to start uh, working with our farmers. And we do some samples to them. They like the samples, and we start getting more orders. So that is how we are kind of attracting the uh, buyers on the platform. Our more focus platform is more farmer focused. We're trying to onboard the number of farmers by giving them some uh, farther market price assurance. Okay, uh, giving them some minimum price uh, assurance, payment assurance. Okay, uh, we are trying to onboard a large number of farmers. So we are more as a platform, we are more farmer focused than the buyer focused as on today. So buyers are more sort of by business development teams. Uh, we've also done certain society models wherein it has been driven through influencers. So there have been influencers who have gathered a lot of buyers uh, in say your society or something like that, family during the COVID situation. And that is how we have been able to generate demand. So these are the two ways wherein we have been able to onboard buyers to our uh, platform. Great, thank you. And I think uh, we'll take one more question. Uh, there's a question by Prabhat Chaturvedi. Uh, what are the major challenges that you experience in terms of uh, adoption by the farmers? So in terms of the major challenges uh, in adoption by the farmers, I think uh, it is largely uh, around the mindset as well. For some of them, so say uh, majority of the farmers say that I don't really want to go about uh, reaching out to farther markets. Okay, I am happy in what I'm getting over here. A trader will come, he will uh, harvest my produce, and he will give me some money, and that is uh, what is good for me. I am satisfied in that. So I think that is probably the biggest challenge wherein the uh, the farmers have been uh, kind of you know lost uh, so much of money while they tried to be more entrepreneurial in the past that they today have a slight uh, apprehension towards being more uh, speaking or being more entrepreneurial or more enterprising at this point in time. Apart from that, we see that the model that we have put together in terms of access to market and uh, access to cold chain on the farm level with guidance around how the commodities, et cetera, should be uh, graded, sorted, et cetera. The farmers are pretty much forthcoming okay, to really take some of those things up. We're also looking for, say, some partners who are actually working with farmers in helping them in the post harvest management uh, uh, guidance around uh, market linkage. And we would be happy to collaborate with some of them, wherein there are people who are actually uh, working towards making farmers more enterprising. So I think that would be the largest challenge, I would say, uh, we have seen. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Devendra. I think a uh, very interesting solution. And uh, uh, there are a lot of questions on the chat, but in the interest of time, we will not be able to answer all of them now. Uh, what we will do is uh, uh, these questions will be answered by Mr. Devendra, and we will circulate the responses to everyone post the session. Uh, before we move on to the next uh, presentation, uh, we're just going to conduct a very quick poll. Uh, this should not take more than 30 seconds. Uh, you will see a couple of questions on your screen, so request you to all please uh, respond to it. Thank you.
the intent of this poll is in these sessions and how we can contribute uh, uh, better in our uh, further sessions. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you all for this uh, and we'll keep this poll open for another 10 seconds and then we'll move to the next question. Thank you. Um, there's a second uh, question on your screen about how best you would like to engage with the 2030 Water Resource Group as we go along. Um, uh, this webinar series is just one of the several activities that we do in Maharashtra. And, uh, we are keen to understand uh, your interest areas and identify best ways of collaborating as we go forward. Keeping this open for another 10 seconds, and then we will move on to the presentations. Thank you so much for your patience to this. Uh, thank you. Uh, we will be moving on to our next present uh, to our next presentation. Um, I'd like to welcome Mr. Shashank Kumar, the co-founder and CEO of Dehar. He is an alumnus of uh, IIT Delhi and has experience in supply chain, retail, and FMCG sectors. He has been awarded uh, as a Ashoka Fellow in 2013 as a global change maker. He has been featured in the Forbes India 30 under 30 list and the BW Disrupt 40 under 40 list in 2017. He has also been uh, featured among amazing Indians by Times Now in 2014. Uh, Shashank co-founded Dehat in 2012 and he has led the team to many milestones, including uh, the Millennium Alliance, Vodafone Mobile for Good, Action for India, and uh, Rabo Sustainable Ag Asia Challenge. Uh, he was selected for the, by, uh, for the PM India delegation to Kenya for promoting technology in agriculture for small farmers in Kenya and featured as uh, Champions of Change in 2017 by Niti Ayo. Um, thank you uh, for joining us today, Shashank, and welcome. Over to you now. Thanks, Meghna. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, thanks, Meghna. Great. Uh, could you please share your screen, uh, Shashank? Yep, yep, I'll do that. Thank you. Is it visible? Uh, yes, please. If you couldn't make it full screen, that'd be great. Is it better now? Yes, thank you. Yes. Perfect. Thanks, Magma, for the intro and uh, Namaskar and uh, good evening, everyone. So my name is Shashank and I'm going to talk about our model and technology called Dehat. Uh, and it's very clear that Dehat means a village and uh, we are effectively working with the small and marginal farmers in eastern part of India. Uh, we all know the challenges being faced by Indian farmers, right? Challenges related to poor yield, challenges related, related to low income from agriculture. Uh, at Dehat, we have redefined the problem statement through our lens that any individual farmer in India, they have multiple agricultural requirements. They want to buy quality agricultural inputs. They need advisory. They need technical support. They need bunch of information. They need financing, insurance, machinery. And of course, at the end of the season, they want to sell the produce at better price. 
ground level in reality we know that and we have seen that how individual farmers they have to rely upon different people different channels for all these multiple agricultural requirements and while chasing those different people different channel often our farmers they lose efficiency so they have is a model around this problem statement it talks about providing complete end to end agricultural services to farmers it talks about providing entire 360 degree agricultural services and providing entire value chain services to farmers in a highly accessible way we are focusing on three different stages of the agri uh, entire agri value chain it starts from agri input where farmers they get access to wide range of quality seed fertilizer pesticides directly from agri input companies and here they save some cost they get access to high quality agri input products at right time right price and right quality and not just the cost saving along with that they get an ensured productive season ahead the next is crop advisory where depending upon which crop they are growing depending upon which variety they are growing depending upon what agricultural input they have purchased in past they receive complete customized advisory services which is very customized which is very exhaustive it covers the entire value chain right from irrigation management to pest and disease control to right harvesting schedule and everything and because of this timely and customized advisory they experience better yield of the crop very recently we have also started helping our farmers to get access to financial services so during the production stage after getting input they get a complete sort of support from the hub to ensure best possible quality and quantity of the produce and then all these efforts boil down to the next service which is the market linkage of farm produce where whichever crop they are growing they get access to right market better market better buyer or bigger buyers so effectively at farmer level it's a one stop solution they save some cost when they buy input they experience better yield of the crop due to advisory they help they and and they get better price of the produce at the end of the season and in total it helps them to experience more than 50% increment in their net income from agriculture along with huge quotient of convenience because they don't have to go here and there if all these services are available very close to their farm gate and let me tell you how so this is a kind of network what we have been trying to build where every individual farmer whether they have a smartphone or feature phone they remain connected with us through a mobile application through our helpline number and that's that's how they communicate with us in case of any agricultural requirement they want to buy anything if they want to sell anything or if they have any crop advisory related query they communicate with us through either of the channel the app or the call center then each and every individual farmer is connected with our last mile micro entrepreneur or a physical center and this dehat center or dehat micro entrepreneur it caters to a catchment area of 3 to 5 km so all agri input fulfillment as well as output aggregation it happens it is done by the individual micro entrepreneur right from right at these dehat centers and then back end of these dehat centers the back end of this dehat micro entrepreneur is completely owned controlled and supported by us through our technology through through credit through logistics through lot of you know field supports as well so this kind of you know network we have been trying to build where every individual farmer is is being served by an individual micro entrepreneur and the micro entrepreneur is backed by our regional warehouses we call it node currently present in eastern part of india working with more than 210000 farmers uh bihar up jharkhand odisha uh, in all these states we have our last mile networks and the overall approach approach has always been pretty crop agnostic so we have farmer is in center and we have been aiming to provide all these value chain services to them that's how it looks like on ground you can see the farmer how they are communicating with us then the picture of one of the dehat center storage uh you now retail point for agri import and a collection center in front of the center itself and then picture of our node or warehouses where we take care of post harvest value addition and it acts as a regional inventory point for input as well as for output 
we have developed and deployed different and various agriculture uh, technical uh, you know tech interfaces throughout the chain throughout the stage right at farmer level where we have a very robust crm or call center facility then the application at the center level there is another application even during the transit period do we have different applications to track and to bring the transparency across the value chain and then applications for our buyers and sellers and that's how basically we connect different agri input companies to farmers different output buyers to farmers and now these banks and financial institutions as well these centers as you can see here which are responsible for last mile activity these centers as i mentioned earlier these centers are run by individual micro entrepreneurs and now since past year and half in many of the cases these centers are being run by the farmer producer organizations as well if i talk about the milestones so currently to more than 212000 farmers they are active with us on day to day basis either they are buying any agri import or they are selling the produce or if they are or they are raising their advisory related queries these farmers are being served by 602 they have micro entrepreneurs if i talk about the value chain intervention about if i talk about the current milestone of our scale so every day we are aggregating currently 380 metric ton of produce from our farmers these produce are perishable as well as non perishable uh, cro major crops are corn wheat uh, fruits like banana or lychee and then seasonal vegetables on the ag input side every day we are delivering more than 5000 agri input orders of seed fertilizer and pesticides through our last mile network crop advisory is very important uh you know uh, uh, intervention and services for us we don't charge farmers for advisory our revenue model is mostly transaction based that whenever there is a transaction that there we make money but still we have been investing consistently on the crop advisory side so that we can provide very accurate precise and customized advisory solution to farmers every month we are spending more than 386000 minutes while advising farmers for sustainable agricultural practices every month the value chain the size of the 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 agri value chain transaction or intervention we are doing that close to 30 crore as on date these are few of the major buyers sellers or different stakeholders or channel partners uh, you know whom we brought at one platform and this is the role this is the responsibility of the hub that irrespective of the land holding of uh, an individual farmer irrespective of the cropping pattern irrespective of the ticket size of the transaction how we can connect every individual small farmer to best technology to best agricultural input to best market or probably the best source of financing or warehousing for that matter in terms of our collaboration with government institution we have been part of uh, rural livelihood mission programs in bihar uh, as well as jharkhand uh, the program is called as jivika and johar respectively where dehat is one of the partners to hand hold their farmer producer organization so the fpos they have formed now we are now we have entered with our plug in services of all these agri value chain interventions for the fpo which helps those fpos to serve their member farmers in a sustainable way and similarly in bihar we are also working with 10 fpos supported by nabard in similar fashion we have the awards and recognition which always encourages us to continue what we are doing uh, but one award i would like to emphasize here uh, uh, that last year we have been declared as best agtech startup to work with fpo uh, and here we are uh, and we and today we are here to explore any synergy with you what you are doing in maharashtra as on that we are not present in maharashtra i'll be very honest that immediately we don't have any plans for maharashtra but we we'll, but we would love to be in touch with you and we would love to explore if you see any synergy with the mobilized group or with the mobilized community you know you are the mobilized network of community you guys have been creating under your program i strongly believe that startups like us if we if we if we join hands with initiatives like yours it will be a win win situation for everyone for you as a program owner for the community and also for the startup because it will help us to scale up our intervention with reduced marginal effort on that note thank you and i'll be happy to answer if there is any question 
Great, thank you so much, Shashank. A uh, very interesting presentation and uh, uh, request everyone to please put your uh, questions in the chat box there. Um, Shashank, a couple of questions for you. Uh, you did earlier mention that you are not currently in Maharashtra, but if you do need to go into new geographies, what kind of financial or non-financial support are you looking for? So mostly for you know, network, uh, right? So let's say if uh, someone can help us to to help us with a pipeline of prospective, uh, you know, last mile partners in form of cooperatives, in form of FPOs, in form of individual micro entrepreneurs. Uh, if you have any, if you have created any infrastructure in rural area, infrastructure for last mile rural retail, infrastructure for post harvest value addition, and if we can leverage those infrastructure, that will be good. Uh, so these are the few quick high level thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Siyada Sidwat. Um, how is the Dehat network uh, working with existing government input chains for seeds and fertilizers? So, so our association uh, with the government is mostly on the advisory side where we work very closely with the State Agriculture University and Krishi Vigyan Kendra, where we believe that, you know, that we can probably help their technology to to take out take to the reach into wider you know farmer farmer network uh, through our uh, technology through our extension platforms uh, so uh, at the same time for major 28 29 crops we have prepared we have developed a very exhaustive digitized crop test database which where again the state agriculture universities icar we got a lot of you know support from them in form of content Coming to your question on the input side, uh, again, we also source a lot of you know seeds from agriculture universities, right? Where I mean, like a lot of indigenous varieties of seeds they have developed and they want to distribute to farmers in a in a transparent way. So we work around those indigenous varieties of seeds of paddy and wheat, uh, you know, to our farmers network as well. But uh, but uh, as on date, we have not been the part of program where government distribute the agri input in a subsidized way. We are not part of that program and neither we are looking. Got it. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Path Gupta. So could you uh, go into a little detail about the kind of advisory that you provide? Uh, is it farm management, agronomic practices, agromet related, a little detail about your advisory services? Sure. So if the advisory is based on the transactional data related to the individual farmer. So depending upon which variety of seed farmer has purchased, and the date of transaction. Based on that, they receive complete customized advisory alert for the entire package of practices throughout the season. And they receive, on an average, they receive this alert every week. That this week, if you're an okra farmer, this, for this particular variety of maybe Radhika, this week you have to take care of wheat. This year is important for irrigation, something like that. So one form of, or, so this is just, the, just to give you a sense of the content. Now, uh, the mode of advisory, is there are multiple fold. One channel where when we schedule this outbound calls to farmer in form of this voice. The another channel when they call on our call center, our helpline number, and where basically when we solve the query. If the farmer is smartphone user, they capture the crop based query in form of voice, in form of picture, in form of text, and then they post the query and then we solve. So this is what we have been doing. To answer your question, the advisory is related to the primary profile of farmer in terms of what land do they have, what kind of you know soil test record basically we have for the particular farmer. So that's the static profile. And the another data point is the dynamic data in terms of what query they have purchased, they have asked earlier, what agri input they have purchased and based on that. So that's the that's the current form. However, very recently we have also started digitizing their land parcels. So that when any farmer would call on our call center, probably our call center will have access or visibility through this satellite imagery, through this special technology to that land parcel. And so that we can, we can, we can give the impression to the farmer regarding important parameters, such as current soil, current moisture, soil moisture of your plot, water stress of your plot, nutrient stress of your plot. So that is something where, you know, we are currently working and we aspire to know go live in the next few weeks or months or so great thanks Rishan. uh we have another question from bandhu nisa um so do you need uh, need to access government data for any of your services or solutions that you provide 
and what kind of government uh, what kind of relationship do you currently have with the government in terms of um, access to data if any as on that there is no relationship with government for data but nowadays at different forums such as niti aayog or other forums there has been a lot of you know, discussion has been going on around this uh, this would probably solve uh, or this would reduce our effort to accumulate the data right for example we can we can we can map the farm boundary spatially but tagging that farm boundary to the individual farmer to define to decide that this particular plot belongs to whom that is something where we need to put a manual effort right of course the data or access to data to government can certainly reduce our effort in this direction so so as on date like the data related to land ownership data related to uh, you know uh, farmer uh, as on date that's not accessible to us uh but yeah if it happens uh, it will certainly reduce the efforts uh, by people like us right uh we have a question from vijay p who wants to understand your thoughts on whether you think a subscription based paid advisory model uh, is is feasible in india well it's feasible if the advisory is really helpful for the farmer if the advisory is customized and if the value proposition is clear to farmer uh while at at dehak there is no subscription fee for farmer but i'm sure you would agree vijay that across india in all states you will find many individual consultants freelancer working in their own individual capacity with farmer while promoting greenhouse cultivation while promoting niche cultivation like stevia or papaya right and at the same time even on the agri startup agri tech startup side now in different parts of india we have models where where people are charging 800 rupees per farmer uh, you know per season kind of you know fee to provide the the, the satellite based a satellite based uh, you know advisory solution in a highly customized way so it's feasible of course it's not feasible for 100% of the farmer but uh, but 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 those farmers who are inclined towards commercial cultivation those farmers who are who are relatively large or uh, you know who want to uh, plan their cultivation based on market uh, demand uh, it's feasible for those farmers great uh, thank you shashank thank you for um, uh, thank you for the presentation and answering these questions uh, there uh, there are a lot more questions in the chat box which we will address later and uh, send these responses to everyone um, i'd like to request kavita to please come in Uh, yeah thank you thank you meghna and uh, thank you devendra and thank you shashank i think uh, uh, very very good insights and all i can say is may your tribe grow and may the tribe of those who use your solutions grow so wish you all the very best uh, as you pour into new geographies with the um, you know with the meaningful work that you are doing and impact the lives of many of our farmers uh we have quite a few of our colleagues and our msp partners on this call and i just thought it would be a good a good thing for uh, maybe shenoy shenoy can you hear me yeah i can hear you i can hear manager. sure he is a general manager with uh, arya collateral which works uh, very closely with small holder farmers and npos uh, in collateral management services so uh, i thought it would be good for you if you could share a few words about your experience on this and you know the solutions that were just presented by devendra and shashank Uh, uh yeah good evening kavita mekna and the rest of the team over here uh, quite a uh, quite a fascinating technologies i just want to spend now uh, at a point wise uh, where i see the application of this technology on a pan india basis where, where some of the studies which we did in the eastern market especially in the jharkhand bero normandy bero block where you know which which uh, supplies a lot of off season vegetable to rest of the country i have seen many a situations where the collectives you know if they can hold the produce for just overnight they can save a lot of uh, you know they can reduce a lot of losses in the in the in the price uh, reduction which is coming because the market starts at 4 am and then the price you know it 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 start depleting hourly basis and by 6 6:30 everything is over and the farmer is at a really at a uh, at a distress to sell it somehow and get out of the market meanwhile some of these uh, items that they sell the off season peas or beans are in great demand rest of the country and and in fact in when we studied with some of the collectives we have we have also suggested this ecofro suggestion there where you know a, even in small quantities if it can be not a large cold storage they don't need this type of a holding device 
uh, you know if the, if it can when it when it helps the farmer or the collective to hold it for you know a little overnight itself you know there is a there is a tremendous uh, benefit it can give to the farming community and coming to dehat uh, uh, shashang has been uh, in the forefront of the technology even when we wanted to uh, try a new technology in india that is the flexible hermetic solution shashang was very cooperative and uh, i had a lot of interaction with him we tried it with one of the collectives over there and uh, you know the model that he is pursuing is something which i think can be the answer for a lot of problems what the indian small holder farmers faces in many of the uh, many parts of the country the productive alliances is something which world bank is even uh, you know pioneering or i heard i heard it first time from the world bank project when they were doing it in kenya and some other parts of malawi and some other parts of africa so the 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 uh, the, the, the understanding and the coming together or collaboration between the input companies the 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 service providers like the hath the post harvest players and again at the output this sort of a productive alliances is something that can easily uh, you know uh, can be a win win solution for all the partners and then can be also a success mantra i would say for improving the small holder farm income uh, that, that's what i wanted to just mention two key points sir kavita uh, great um, thank you so much uh, shinoy and uh, there is any other feedback from any one of you we'd be happy to take that on Uh, but i think megna has put up uh, a slide which talks about these social media handles and the hashtags that you can ta tag to spread the word uh, i think we all need to do our bit uh, to take these solutions to as as many farmers and as many fpos and as many uh, private sector partners as possible so uh, so please do spread the word and uh, we will continue our endeavor to uh, to bring to you innovative solutions by startups and social entrepreneurs to our partners uh, thank thank you janesh for uh, Uh, you know for all your help and support and I wish you all the very best uh, devendra and uh, shashank thank you very much thank you thanks everyone thank you everyone thanks a lot thank you thank you raj raj